All right. <sighs> Welcome. We are back with another episode. I'm your host, Derek Asante. And uh, I want to thank you for being here. I appreciate your time. And I hope that you get some uh, good information from this episode, as you did maybe the last or those previous to the last. So this week, it's a little different. There's a lot of things I'm processing. And um, anyway, I don't want to take too much of your time. I want to see if I can just jump right into it. And I'm hoping that, uh, you know, it piques your interest. It also allows me to uh, express what I've gotten um, out of the last week and so forth. See, I like to live and then share some of those experiences that I've gone through, right? But I also like to read a lot. And so when I read a lot, again, I get informed. And when I'm enlightened, I can't help but to come over here and, and share that with you guys. This is going to be the f second, actually, not the first, the second um, episode where I actually have video footage. Um, so make sure you check out the YouTube channel. And if you're watching this on YouTube, I want to thank you for your support. Now, I'm learning. And I, I've said this before in previous episodes, but I'm learning that we all live with expectations. You know, and when I say expectations, I'm talking about, you know, for the things that we believe we should have, but in fact, we don't. For many opportunities that sometimes we feel we deserve, but we have yet to receive. And how do we navigate these spaces? Okay. And it's not easy. I'd be remiss if I said that it was. It's not easy being a young person. And it's definitely not easy getting older. But what do we do about it? By the way, if you haven't realized this episode, <laughs> which you would know till I tell you, this episode is called Hush Now. And the reason why I called it that is because what inspired me to call it was I heard a Billie Holiday song and it was called Don't Explain. Now, there are some lyrics in that song, if you go and check it out, that I don't necessarily agree with or subscribe to, but there are components in there that I do like, that I do um, appreciate and I think could help us as a people, right? Um, it can help people to just navigate relationships, uh, navigate how they interact with other people and so forth. And so that's where the inspiration for the title came from. But about the young people and about the old people, what do we do about it? OK, and I think we should decide we, should, we need to decide on an action we need to take in order for us to be able to move forward. See, the world is our canvas and what it has available to us all, right, is what we need to survive, what we need to be successful. All that is readily available to us. However, <laughs> this is the big one. However, we are indecisive, right? We are the indecisive ones who lack the skill and the ability and the value, right? So we don't know how to identify something that is significant to us. We also don't know what the value is in things that we, you know, often discard or disregard. We don't understand the significances, right? Um, in the resources that are available to us. So that makes it hard for us to decide. That makes it hard for us to move forward because we don't know what it is that we have, yet we can't appreciate it. And because we can't appreciate it, guess what? We don't know what we have, right? So that's a part of the challenge, I find. And 
the resources that I'm talking about, really, the fact of the matter is they will never satisfy our greed for more. We always want more. And, and they won't be good enough for us, but the exceptional ones, right? The individuals that can appreciate these things, these resources, are those that are familiar with, with value and significance of the resources. When you are aware, you can act accordingly. And the same goes for when you are unaware. Okay? But what's true for sure is what you don't know can hurt you. Can be devastating. Right? Sometimes worse or far more than what you do know. Okay? And when I talk about resources, I don't want to leave you guys in the dark, but I'm talking about our time. Right? Our money. Our skills. Our talents. Services. And maybe even products that, that we provide. And most importantly, you know, our energy. These are the resources that I'm referring to. We don't necessarily value them. That's why people do the things they do. That's why people spend the time they spend on the things that they do spend the time on. Our energy, how we, we, we give that away so easily to people who don't necessarily have an impact or to things that don't have an impact in our de development, our growth. Right? So this is what I'm talking about. But I think it's important, right, to recognize that in your own life's patterns, like you got to really pay attention. Like, what do you do on a regular basis? What don't you do? And what does that mean? There are patterns. We are creatures of habits, right? So we do things for a while and then we might change and then we do that thing for a while. But I need you to recognize that. Your life's patterns and how do you utilize them to your advantage? If you do, right? How often do you use it to your advantage? Right? People are bound to struggle. Like we are dedicated. We're devoted to struggle. Why? Because it makes a great story. Right? It's great to be able to say, I came from here and now I'm here. That's a great story. That's every hero's story. Rags to riches, right? You hear it in songs all the time, especially in the hip-hop community, right? But musicians use this as well because they understand almost every human being on the planet can relate to that. So people are bound to struggle and hardship while others are drawn to, you know, submerged in opportunities. They see, they excel, they take something and they just run with it. Right. And the, the doors of opportunity are constantly available to them, readily available to them. I think that's the difference between the two different people that I'm describing here. But it doesn't matter which one of these two you are or that you're familiar with. Right. You must use whatever your situation is to your benefit. And if you don't, then it's going to be to your detriment. So. In order for you to reap these benefits, right, your time, energy, and so forth, you have to come to terms with the fact that this is who you are. Yes, you can change. You can become someone else. But in this moment, while you're listening or watching this, this is who you are. You are here right now. You are present with me right now. And you need to look in that mirror that's before you and say, who is this version of me? That's important. Right? So once you, you are at peace with who you are, then you can start thinking about, wait a minute, this is my situation. How can it be a benefit to me? But it starts up here. Right? Take me, for example, sometimes what I struggle with is hmm, how independent we become and the constant rushing, rushing and hustling and bustling to relinquish our dependence. Like, think about it. As a kid, you wanted to be an adult. 
You don't want to depend on somebody. You don't want to hear from somebody who's older and telling you what to do because you wanted that freedom. This is where the first step or stage of the illusion of freedom begins, right? It's sold to kids. I want to be grown. I want to be this. I want to be that. And that's a part of the challenge, right? So we're quick to relinquish our dependence. Then we are inconsistent when it comes to you know, realizing that we actually need each other. Think about it. Somebody's walking down the street, they get mugged. They would hope another person is nearby to call for help or to assist them. You are in your house alone and you fall sick. How are you going to get assistance? You need someone to help you. Right? You are with a friend, your phone dies. You're going to need to borrow their phone to use and make a call. Or a stranger. You might use a stranger's phone, whoever is available to you. But it's another human being. Right? And these are just superficial things that I'm kind of throwing out there. But food. We need someone to prepare food so that we can buy the food. We need someone to be able to have the produce available in the store so we can go and pick that up. We need someone to be behind a counter helping us with medication when we need medical assistance, right? We need each other. But when you meet someone and you say, hey, do you have $5? Do you have a dollar that you can help me out with? I really need to get from point A to point B. And that person won't help you. Why? Because in that moment, during that request... It's a transaction. It's how we often look at it subconsciously. It's a transaction. If I give you this, how are you going to be a benefit to me later on? This is the mentality that sometimes we, we um, ascribe to, right? And so with this mentality, it doesn't get us anywhere because we're literally going back to segregating from one another. I don't need you. You can't help me and therefore I can help you, right? And these are the things that we need to be aware of because unfortunately the languages that we speak today reflects how little we actually love ourselves because it starts in here and if it starts in here how do I learn to give that to somebody else if I don't know how to give it to myself right and it's just another reflection of how little time we spend thinking about others and I think it's essential for us to navigate our way back to being interdependent. And you probably heard me use that word before in another episode much earlier into the pause. So check it out. It might be in season one or so. But um, interdependent is important. It's how we've been before, you know, technology and everything else came in and altered our way of thinking. Okay. But. It's in the space of interdependence where we thrive most as human beings. And this is the key. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? This is the key. So, I've experienced a, a bit of a shift in perspective. And I want to share that with you a little bit. Right? My perspective was about attitudes the attitudes of of people right that people have about society and i found that a large percentage of my black people i have known over the years displayed a poor attitude towards society in general i'm generalizing here OK, um, it was more of a victim's mentality. Right. It's not my fault why this is the way it is. It's not my fault why um, society is the way it is. It's somebody else's fault. It's never me. I have no control. Woe was me. And and that was the mentality. And it may not be in that that tone, but you'll see it and you'll hear it in conversations here and there. And so, for a period, I adopted it. I adopted that mentality. And I wasn't sure 
what to do with it. Because if everything is someone else is doing, that means there's nothing for me to do. There's nothing I can do. I'm not in control of anything. Not even myself. Right? And unfortunately, I used to believe this to be a fact about people who look like me. But with more, you know, information that I discover, with more self, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Self love and, and serving and just learning and discovery. That's the word, self discovery. I realized that it's not only black people that thought this way, right? It's not just black people who had this negative outlook on, on life, but Almost every group of people has this. Like, we have this mentality as a people. Like, human beings, there's a small percentage of us that have this positive mindset and actually live it and believe it. But there's a larger group of us who are kind of subscribed to this negative um, narrative about ourselves, right? This phenomenon right had birthed a society of entitled and and ignorant people and this is where we are today okay there's been a change not only with people's attitude about the world around them right but towards themselves and so with all this negative self talk people hate themselves it's not a positive thing, right? It's definitely not a positive attitude to have towards yourself. And then you can speak to random people on the street. Listen, you can do that survey that we see online all the time, you know, the YouTube shorts and, and things of that nature. And people are surveying people, and everybody wants to see a camera, wants to put their best foot forward. It's almost like they're lying to themselves because they truly know this is not how they actually think. But because the camera's rolling, I don't want to appear you know, ignorant to the masses that may come across this little clip. Right? So we put on the positive mask and we dance around that. We put on the show. But once the cameras are off and the lights are off, guess what? The self-talk that we give ourselves, if we give ourselves, is back to where it belongs, which is in the negative pile. So we're experiencing more self-hate in the 21st century than any other period in time i find this is clearly my opinion okay um but this is what i'm observing this is what i'm, I'm coming to realize right and there are several contributing factors that have led us to this space right now this point in time and that is technology freedom of expression right and people not being able to, you know, be as resourceful as we once were as human beings. There are a lot more of us that are not resourceful. I find that they are. Now, pardon me, because I'm speaking about just my small ecosystem of people that I am able to come in contact with. <clears throat> I can't speak globally, but I'm sure you are listening to this in your part of the world. You can say, hey, you know what? He might be onto something, right? It wouldn't be a far, far stretch for me to make that assumption. And, and this is the problem. We are just not as resourceful as we used to be. If you look back in history, they had not even a fraction of what we have available to us as far as resources and access. But how productive are we? When was the last time you heard or saw someone invent something magnificent, magnificent that's like, you know, that, that made it across the globe because all must have, right? An example would be like transportation, okay? There's different modes of transportation and when that invention took, took place or even electricity and so forth, right? When those things came to, came to be, you look around the globe, a large percentage of people have access to transportation modes, whether it's a bicycle, whether it's a car, whether it's a train, a bus, right? A skateboard, 
right? An e-bike, name it. Transportation has transcended across time. But what's the most recent invention? And don't tell me social media platforms. <laughs> Please don't tell me social media platforms, right? So there's a lot happening, right? And there's a great deal of confusion about who we are and what our true purpose is today than any other time, right, historically. So, and that's a big question. If you click on YouTube right now or online, there's a huge conversation going on. There's a battle with feminism, um, men's rights. That's another, you know, topic that we'll discuss in a, in a later episode, but there's a great deal of confusion about how to identify and, and who you want to be and, and all of this. Okay. So times have changed. Yes. But is it always for the better? Okay. Um, one thing I've noticed with all this shifting and changing and confusion is that as people, we oppress ourselves as individuals more now right if not i mean yeah more now than ever before okay there's a lot of self oppression happening than than having a global or or societal influence going on right now like an individual would doubt themselves before someone else would lose faith in them so it's almost like you're going into what are what whatever um, job opportunity, let's say, or a competition, that athlete is going to self doubt before someone else says, "Hey, you're not good enough." Even though they made it to the stage, you've been preparing up until this point to get on the stage and perform. But what happens? So. We have more say as to what we decide to do and what we don't do more so now than the world around us. Right. And so and it begins like somebody will probably argue with me and say, hey, no, no, that's not the case. But think about it. We live on our phones. So if I choose, I make a decision to go on my phone. Right. And click on a short a video and get stuck there. In the rabbit hole that was a decision that i made now the information that i allow to seep in here is going to have an impact on how i feel about myself right so with that happening self-doubt is in place and before you know it i show up to that stage i've been training my entire life for and i don't perform i put on some sort of performance but not to my skill level, not to my true ability, not to who I will be happy with once I finish my time here, right? So that's what I'm talking about when I say we self-oppress, right? We don't think we are capable. And that's a part of the challenge, right? Because what's happening now, the world establishes for everybody, right? Right? the foundations of self-hate. And it's been doing this for a while, for a long time, right? And when they do it long enough and effective enough, you know, we then become um, sheep, for better, lack of a better term, right? We assume the role of the oppressor and then we start to oppress ourselves. His job is done or her job is done or their job is done and here we are, still down here, hating ourselves because of what they had said way before that we were. And with a broken record that repeats, eventually we start to believe it, right? The lies become our truth, right? Um, I can't remember which song, but I think it was Jay-Z that said, um, you know, a broken clock tells time at least two times in a day or a broken clock clock is right twice in a day or something of that nature. Right. And it's true. Even though it's broken, 
when you start to believe the stories about you that's being told about you, guess what? The minute you believe it, it makes it true. It makes it a fact. Right? So, I guess what I'm saying is our self-talking has become toxic and devastating to our self-image. And this is a part of the reason why mental health, mental health, you know, is and has exploded in recent years. I mean, it's been there for forever, but it's literally exploded, right? Along with toxic culture of the me, myself, and I, you know, F everyone else. That's the mentality, right? And that's the mentality a lot of us have about just our fellow man. <clears throat> and this is a small part of the reason Many of us, you know, don't know how to love ourselves, much less try to give love to someone else, right? If I don't even know what that looks like, how can I actually offer that to somebody, right? If I have no idea what that looks like, how can I offer it to you? And that's important to know. Something came to me as well. Um, I know I rambled on a little bit there, but it's all a part of it. Okay, as the thoughts come to me, I'm going to share it with you. But something else that hit me is um, that term, loose lips sink ships. You know, a lot of people use it in... in um, in a scenario that's related to, let's say, a group of people or a camaraderie or, or you know, uh, cliques or, or crews would use it, right? Uh, we do something together. Uh, don't go telling because then you're going to rat everybody else out, right? I guess, for lack of a better term, the best analogy I can give you for that would be, uh, what is it, that show, The First 48. Right, we might do something wrong together, but once one of us gets nabbed, they start singing. Right, so but I want you to remember that because it actually applies to our relationships with our partners, right? Right, our, our, our love partners, our family members, and, and so forth, because we abuse the, the word love. Think about that couples, relationships, marriages, we abuse the word love. Because that's all we say when we're walking towards that, that point in time of a union or commitment or whatever, you know, um, point in time where you solidified or affirmed your relationship. Right. So the word love is what we abuse and we use very often. Yet we are often divorcing, separating and speaking toxic you know, toxicity about our partners. And the moment we are not satisfied with them about something they did or said, this is where we head, right? We go right to, oh no, he's this or she's this, and name calling, okay? Or I'm not happy, I'm going to leave. So the loose lips often use the I love yous, from an empty place of the soul and the heart, right? And and then in turn, <laughs> they sink the relationship. Okay, there's a ship in there. You like to play on words, right? I'm having fun with this. So think about that, right? They use a lot of I love yous, but it's loose lips because it doesn't actually hold any water. They say what they need to say to get what they need, what they want in the moment. That's what a loose lip is, right? It's loose. There's no value to them. But then in turn, they will turn around and sink that relationship. Right? Because those three words literally have zero value today than they did yesterday. And even yesterday, they had a different value. Right? If you go as far back in time as you want to go, when, when our, you know, great greats, were together, they didn't use the word love, right? It was a union of trust and respect and, and resourcefulness. 
A man was with a woman because she can take care of him in ways which allowed him to go out and take care of her in different ways. That's where the, the, the gender roles came in, right? But again, I'm not going to get too far into the gender roles because I'll, I'll be talking more about that again um, on a different episode. But you understand, right? And then over time, we found the word love, right? And it became a little bit more about intimacy and trust and loyalty. Um, we no longer did it because we can actually work well together, right? You can provide for me in this way and I can provide for you in that way. And it's no longer that. Now it became material things and what can you buy me? Get me a ring, get me this, get me that, right? So this was the marketing ploy that came over time. So I say that to say the I love yous were never really a thing as people, right? It was a trust, respect, and an understanding that we needed each other. It's no different from the bartering system, right? A neighboring town or village would bring things over to the next village that they, ne that they needed and vice versa, right? But today, what's happening is we collude against each other, right? Um, but more importantly, we collude against ourselves, the individual, every day through our self-doubt and how we set these limits, right, for ourselves and our capabilities and eventually committing suicide figuratively, right? Not, not literally, but figuratively, because when you have a vision for yourself and you're going along with it and you meet a partner and you now depend on them entirely to help inspire you and when they don't do that you start to think that you are actually not capable or worthy of this dream and now you start to do the damage to yourself and you no longer no longer want to do that thing anymore and guess what before you know it you stop doing it and this is what happens but it's easier for us to blame our partners because we they might have you know disagreed at one point um, and because now we're so sensitive, we fell victim to those words. And now we blame somebody else for something that we innately lacked to begin with because we didn't develop that at an early stage. Right. So when I say we commit suicide, I'm talking figuratively that we kill our own dreams and which is a part of us, a major part of us. So by doing that, we are no longer here. We become someone else, an outer shell of who we wanted to be or something, right? But the world says that, you know, it's important to identify as a pronoun. This is just an example I'm giving, right? Right. So the world, the external entity says, uh, we need to identify as a pronoun or think a particular way. And they say, you know, they'll say that long enough. Every media outlet is going to say it, repeat it, and it becomes a topic. And when you hear it long enough that you now have a pronoun and think how they want you to think. This is what happens to every single one of us in one way, shape or form. Right. And it's called indoctrination. It's alive and well. And it continues because we do it to ourselves. The machine does not have to do it to us any longer. Right. Now, this brings me to a place of reflection. Right. And and dreams as a man, a man who loves and respects and appreciates women. And in the many conversations that I've had with my fellow men about relationships with women, the one wish that. I hear a lot of guys say they want is peace and quiet along with maybe a kiss and a hug to show the love and appreciation for making it back home in one piece. Isn't that crazy? But a lot of men I'm, I'm realizing online think that what men want are their bodies. 
So, so here's the thing. Sometimes, often, all men want to hear is simple things. These are just examples, okay? Um, I'm glad you're back. And this is where that Billy Holiday song comes into play. Right? I know the world is crazy out there, and I know you have to navigate it every day, but I'm glad you're back. Sometimes that's all we want. And you don't have to necessarily use those words. You just have to show it with your expression, whether it's a smile, whether it's a kiss, a hug. It's the simple things, right? I'm glad you're back. Without the interrogants, right? The interrogations of, of, you know, what could have been but wasn't, right? And you become the police that we are so fearful of as black men. Now, I'm being more specific now. Black men, we are more concerned about the police. So when we walk into our homes... And there's a bit of an interrogation. You're just reminding us. Right? And if you become the officer, and you now start interrogating me, you know, when I say me, I'm, I'm, I'm the image of that black man in, in your home, right? Um, or your partner's home, whatever it is, your friend's home, right? I'm just, work with me here, right? Don't lose me. Okay, so if the woman becomes the officer then that is their own self-doubt or hate that is being projected onto the male when he walks in through those doors. When you have a lot of your own insecurities that now you're projecting and you're framing it or forming them in, in, in a way of questioning to make him feel like he did something wrong or he should feel guilty for something that he probably hadn't even done yet. You know? Um, but you're projecting that onto the other person. And I think that's a part of the problem too. Right? Uh, let your partner know how you feel about them. But in a positive light. Because that's more important than reminding them of things that you haven't been able to let go of for your own reasons. Right? Because it's easier to dip in the bag of, of negativity when you had a bad day. Now you want this person you're looking at to also experience what you have gone through. And so you project that onto them. And you start with the questioning from that space. Right? So uh, I just want to share some examples that, that I think will be beneficial in your home, your relationships, your friendships, whatever it is, okay? Uh, you can say something like, and this is, is, is both ways. You can reciprocate this because not just women that do the interrogations. Some guys are out there who also do the interrogations, right? Uh, other people will call those female tendencies, but don't shoot the messenger, <laughs> okay? <laughs> but here are some examples, okay? Uh, I, I love you. And appreciate you, and I'm yours. Think about what that does for that person when they hear you tell them that you love them, that you appreciate them, and that you are theirs. That's peace right there. That means they don't have to worry about trusting you. They don't have to worry about you um, not trusting them. They don't have to worry about you pulling them down because you're in a bad mood just means you're going to be there through thick and thin. In so many words, right? Or, right or wrong, it doesn't matter much because you're with me. And and that's great. I think that's great. That's that's a part of a, a lyric um, from that Billy Holiday song there, um, right? It doesn't matter much. It doesn't matter if you're wrong or if I'm right. 
or if you're wrong, uh, if I'm wrong and you're right, right? But as long as we're here together, right, we can make it right. We can make it work. We can make it whatever we want it to be, whatever we need it to be, right? And that's powerful because it's, it's understanding that as long as we're alive, we can work out anything. We both value and respect that, you know, we share a stronger, a stronger bond than anything else under the sun. And that's the power of that, right? Pardon me. Right? So ask yourself this question. As a woman listening to this, why is your man anxious or he doesn't say much when he's around you? Think about that. Why is he uneasy or doesn't want to spend time with you or sit around you? Or why is he just always quiet? When he's around you. And, and you're supposed to be his soulmate. His partner is ride or die. Right? Whatever that is. Ask yourself that. No, I, I don't want you to go and ask him that. I just want you to ask yourself that. Say within your own thoughts. Right? And by asking yourself that, I'm hoping that you'll, you'll be more observant and less talkative. That means you'll watch a little bit more what makes him tick, what makes him happy, what makes him smile. And if it's not you, it's important to recognize that. He doesn't need you to be the one to provide him all of that, just like you should need him to provide you with all of that. Okay? But I say that to say you need to spend some more time learning about what makes you tick and what makes him tick. Right? And, and this is important because it's partially because he doesn't want to have to explain or justify his thoughts to you. Sometimes that's the exact reasoning. If I open my mouth and express my thoughts, I'm going to feel because that's what you're going to do. You're going to project and make me feel guilty and I have to now explain and justify my thoughts to you. It's almost to say I don't have an opinion of my own if it does not align with yours. That doesn't work. It's unhealthy. And a real man is going to recognize that. Some of them sometimes will say something, right? And your feelings might get hurt, but you would have to navigate through that. That's, that's, those are your emotions, right? But your partner will always be an individual before he is your partner. Your partner will always be himself or herself as an individual before he or she becomes your partner. This is a fact, and I don't want you to lose sight of that. Okay? Do not lose sight of that because the minute you do, that relationship is going left. Okay? When a man doesn't feel the obligation to explain every decision, he, he is empowered. He is truly empowered when he doesn't feel like he has to explain, right, or justify his thoughts or his decision or his feelings. And guess what happens at that time, too? The pressures and the stresses of expectations are now lowered. And when you lower those pressures and those stresses, guess what? That man gets to live a few more years longer, right? Or a few years longer than he would have had those stresses and pressures remain. So do you want him to live longer? Or do you want to kill him faster? Don't answer that. <laughs> Don't answer that because some people have really good life insurance. <laughs> right? 
right? I'm not trying to condone anything here, but I'm just trying to, you know, give you the example. Okay? Now, the obstacle is that many men and women do not have the capacity to hush. We don't. The ego and the pride will show itself. And that's the ugly head, right? We can't stay quiet. We need to get whatever is on our chest to let it out there so you know exactly how I feel. And we need to display it on a massive platform every single time. Big stage. Make a scene. Make it big. Make it count so this person would hear me. But oftentimes what happens, they don't hear you. Right? This no trust culture better known as cancel culture let's call it what it is okay has allowed everyone to speak <laughs> you know on other people's lives on other people's choices that they've made on other people's decisions without any or very little consequence i can log on to any platform that i'm on right now and and comment on whatever it is that I want to comment on someone's stranger, a stranger's picture, and say what I want to say. Log off, and I'm done. Right? No consequence. All right? Now, I need you to be aware that this is very, very unhealthy. But... What I'm going to leave you with this is this. Love the person you are or have chosen to become. Respect your partner enough to not question them about their decisions. Because their decisions that they've made, they made for themselves or sometimes for the betterment of their situation or their families and so forth. You can definitely disagree with them. You don't have to agree with them. But you do not have the right to shame them. You do not have the right to degrade them, to belittle them, or cancel them because they simply don't share your views. If the disagreement is too great for you to withstand, whether in your home, in the workplace, or in just the relationship depending on where the environment and the situation is taking place, then walk away from that partnership. However, if you choose to stay, then allow them to be who they are and you can be who you are. But hush when they are being themselves. Until next episode, I want to thank you for tuning in every week. And I hope, you know, I was able to trigger or spark some insight, some thought. I want to thank all the supporters. Don't hesitate to click um, subscribe. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, but interact with me. Leave some comments down below. If you're listening to the show, I would love it if you listen to it on Podbean. That's the platform. But... If you're on all the other platforms, continue to support. And I appreciate you for that. Please take a look. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, I would like for you to hit the subscribe button. Click that bell so that you know when the new episode drops. But if you want audio, I need you to make sure you're following on Podbean, where every episode, every Monday morning, gets dropped. Until next episode, love. Peace and nappiness. Shh.